A windy fall day in the early 1980s. The wet leaves swirled around the sidewalk. Pushing my bike up the hill to school, I noticed a strange leaf at my feet. It was big and rust brown, and only when I bent down did I realize it was a 500 Swiss franc bill. That was the equivalent of about $250 back then, an absolute fortune for a high school student. The money spent little time in my pocket. I soon bought myself a top-of-the-range bike with disc brakes and Shimano gears. A bit later because the Zabigo was doing some very, very funny things. But here we are. Hope everybody is doing well. I am looking forward to reading another chapter for you today. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I have the Chinese version. That's what we were planning to read. And while I am learning Chinese, you may not be wanting to learn Chinese. So we're just going to stick to an English book. And we have an amazing book, The Art of Thinking Clearly which is a really good look into how to make better decisions and how to see what we often fall for in life and what holds us back from being able to make good decisions. So we are up to, let's have a look. We have read a lot of this. Um, 84, why money is not naked. That sounds like it's going to be an interesting chapter. How's money effect is the subtitle. Now, I, I've got a really good start on working on my goals. I also had to change a tire, which is an interesting story. Um, but I had a good day yesterday working towards my goals. Uh, today, I have a very good meeting around that as well. So hopefully, you are also ready to work on your goals today. Take a step closer. So we're going to start reading so that everybody of us can get into working on our goals and there's a couple of people that have sent a couple of things, so we're going to quickly say a thank you and follow for that. So always good to see everybody. And there is a couple of hellos. So hello to everybody. And then we're going to get into the reading. There we go. Okay, very good. Here we are. A windy fall day in the early 1980s. The wet leaves swirled around the sidewalk. Pushing my bike up the hill to school, I noticed a strange leaf at my feet. It was big and rust brown, and only when I bent down did I realize it was a 500 Swiss franc bill. That was the equivalent of about $250 back then, an absolute fortune for a high school student. The money spent little time in my pocket. I soon bought myself a top-of-the-range bike with disc brakes and Shimano gears, one of the best models around. The funny thing was, my old Burke bike worked fine. Admittedly, I wasn't completely broke back then. I had managed to save up a few hundred francs through mowing grass in the neighborhood. However, it never crossed my mind to spend this hard-earned money on something so unnecessary. The most I treated myself to was a trip to the movies every now and then. It was only upon reflection that I realized how irrational, irrational my behavior had been. Money is money, after all, but we don't see it that way. Depending on how we get it, we treat it differently. Money is not naked. It is wrapped in an emotional shroud. This is extremely important to understand. Money is absolutely going to be different around the emotions that we hold. So if we are grateful for money, if we look at it and say, oh, I'm so thankful to have this, it is going to be different than if we are thinking that we've gotten it from a bad place or that we've done something wrong around it. And the same with regards to bills. So we get a bill. We can either be thankful that we have this bill and that we have the money to be able to pay for it, or we can be concerned and worried about the fact that we don't have the money for it. And it's a completely different energy. And that energy determines what happens from that point forward. Two questions. You've worked hard for a year. And at the end of the 12 months, you have $20,000 more in your account that you than you had at the beginning. What do you do? A, leave it sitting in the bank. B, invest it. C, Use it to make necessary improvements, such as renovating your moldy kitchen or replacing old tires. Or D, treat yourself to a luxury cruise. If you think like most people, you'll opt for A, B, or C. Second question, you win 20000 in the lottery. What do you do with it? Choose from A, B, C, or D above. Most people now take C or D. And of course, by doing so, they exhibit flawed thinking. You can count it any way you like. 20000 is still 20000 this is really interesting because we perceive winning money as something that 
we can then spend. Whereas if we earn an extra, some people will probably uh, invest it or do something relatively smart with it. Some people also just continue to spend. And uh, if their income was 100000 and then they suddenly have 120000 income because of a raise, they will spend 120000 Of course, one of the best things that you can do is that 20000 then gets put towards assets that will bring you in new income. And you now have an additional income source without having to uh without having to work for it and yes that extra twenty thousand, if it would have been spent would lead to nothing at all so every time you get an, a, a raise every time you earn more money it is always good to set most of it aside and this is and also to keep some for yourself as well. so you might want to take uh 10 or 20 percent and pay it to yourself for something nice because you have done something to earn it uh, and then the 80 percent or 90 percent you actually put into assets we witness similar delusions in casinos a friend places a thousand dollars on the root table a roulette table and loses everything when asked about this he says i really i didn't really gamble away a thousand dollars i won it all that earlier but it's the same amount not for me he laughs we treat money that we win, discover, or inherit much more frivolously than hard-earned cash. If we put the time and the effort into it, we have this, this notion that we have to protect it. If we've won it, if it comes from a place where we haven't had to do anything for it, we don't feel the need to protect it as much because it, it just has this different energy. It is very interesting. I'd love to know your comments later on, either on the YouTube channel or on the Instagram, uh, what you think about all of this as well. The economist Richard Thaler calls this the house money effect. It leads us to take bigger risks, and for this reason, many lottery winners end up worse off after they've cashed in their winnings. The old platitude, win some, lose some, is a feeble attempt to downplay real losses. Thaler divided his students into two groups. The first group learned they had won $30 and could choose to take part in the following coin toss. If it was tails, they would win $9. If heads, they would lose $9. 70% of students opted to risk it. The second group learned they had won nothing, but that they could choose between receiving $30 or taking part in the coin toss, in which heads won them $21 and tails secured them $39. The second group behaved more conservatively. Only 43% were prepared to gamble, even though the expected value for both options was the same, $30. Marketing strategists recognize the usefulness of the house money effect. On online gambling sites reward you with $100 credit when you sign up. And this is the interesting thing. Credit card companies offer the same when you fill in the application form. Free money to start off with. Airlines present you with a few thousand miles when you join their frequent flying clubs. Phone companies give you free call credit to get you accustomed to making lots of calls. And then once you have to pay for it yourself, you're used to making that amount of calls. A large part of the coupon craze stems from the house money effect. Coupons, in a way, are also just like money that we have won. In conclusion, be careful if you win money or if a business gives you something for free. Chances are you will pay it back with interest out of sheer exuberance. It's better to tear the provocative clothing from this seemingly free money, put it in workman's gear, put it in your bank account, or back into your own company. Okay, that's a very interesting chapter. And I would love to know your thoughts on this one. Have you ever experienced free money? And what have you done with it? And if you have worked hard for it, do you protect it more than when you have worked hard for it? So I am very keen to hear your thoughts on this one. I really loved that chapter and I uh, am sure that you did as well. Now, we're going to start heading off into the rest of our week very soon. But I wanted to let you know that we have the recordings of all the other chapters of this book with my commentary on the YouTube channel, which you can find at the Passive Cashflow Club on YouTube. And I would love to see you there. Feel free to subscribe and leave a comment because that is where most of the learning happens when you participate in the conversation and we can start a discussion and I might learn something from you as well, which I'm looking forward to. If you'd like to know what I am up to and what 
I'm doing. And if you'd like to be able to get in touch with me, you can do that on Instagram and you can find me at business underscore team underscore the number six underscore official. And I would love to uh, see you there as well. And you can send me a direct message and we can have a chat about various things. And last but not least, I am looking forward to reading again tomorrow's chapter with you. Tomorrow we are reading chapter 85, Sydney time, 8 a.m. in the morning. And tomorrow is called Why New Year's Resolutions Don't Work. And the subtitle is Procrastination. And this is perfectly timed because we are almost at New Year. I hope you've been having an amazing year this year. And I'd love to have a chat to some of you about what to do to make 2022 the best year that you've ever had. Because, yes, a lot of things have been happening in the last one and a half years, a lot of craziness, a lot of things that might not make sense. And yet there are still people, and this is always the case, there are people who do badly in times like this, and there are people who do really well in times like this. And you can be either. And even in good times, there are people who do really well in good times, and you'd expect most people do. Um, but there are also those people who do not do well in good times. And there are various reasons for this. One might be because some people just thrive on chaos and challenging times. And the other might be because some people just have the right mindset to be able to thrive no matter what happens. And uh, yeah, that's something that is important to keep in mind. So join on uh the YouTube channel, come and see me on Instagram. I'm looking forward to seeing you, getting your comments, getting in touch, getting to know you and reading another chapter for you tomorrow. Have an amazing day today. Go out and take another step towards your goals. I've recently been working on my seven year plan, which is really exciting and an itchy eye. And uh, yes, let's make 2022 an amazing year together. I have a couple of things mm -hmm. lined up that might be able to help various of you, which will be really good. And so I'll see you all tomorrow. Have an amazing day. And yeah, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.